Income spinning has been in the news a bit lately since the government discussion paper, which we authored, was released. And as usual, it's produced all sorts of reactions, the very good and the very positive, people who've wanted to study the issue, and the wacky and the simply mad. Let's talk about some of the things people have been saying. 74% of people who have responded to our website are supportive of income splitting. They see it for what it is, a liberal policy that respects the choices that families make today and the best way of assisting families which might have either one income coming in or one and a part-time income as well. But the critics say, oh no, this is a throwback to the 1950s. It's some idealised view of the way the world ought to be and it doesn't reflect current reality. The notion of a family where one partner is out working full-time supporting that family and perhaps the other partner is either at home full-time or working part-time belongs to a bygone age, they say. Well, they don't know what they're talking about. According to the latest census data, the bygone age they keep referring to is actually 68% of New Zealand households. 68% of New Zealand households are either a single income household or a household where there is a full-time income and a part-time income coming in as well. And that's exactly the type of households that income splitting is aimed at and will benefit in the longer term. So they're out of touch on that score. And then they say this is some policy about trying to force women in particular to stay home to care for the children. It's actually about respecting the choices that people already make. It's not about forcing anyone to do anything. It's a voluntary scheme for a start. And then the critics say, oh look, this policy is too discriminatory because it applies to families with children only. It does so for a very deliberate reason. That's the group that need the choice. The policy costs $370 million for families where they have dependent children up to the age of 18. If we were to do what other countries have done and apply income splitting to all households, and in the case of the French, for instance, allow income splitting between not just partners, but also partners and children, we'd be looking at a bill of around a billion dollars a year. And the question that we then have to ask is, is that a proper tax priority? I think, and United Future believes, that income splitting for parents with dependent children is a worthy and good concept. It gives choice to those families. It might just be the thing that tips the balance between a parent spending longer at home with their children and how many times you hear parents say, if only I could spend more time at home with my kids. But it's really about choice. And it will occur, as the Prime Minister so rightfully points out, if United Future is in a key position after the next election to make it occur. So the ball's in the hands of New Zealand parents. We'd love to hear your submissions and your views, but more importantly, if this is going to become a reality, we need your support to make it so.